Dear students, welcome to the fifth class. It is a great initiative taken by our college to start the video classroom that will be going online. So today I will be teaching a very interesting topic. I shall obviously discuss this briefly because you know it's a video classroom. So I will be teaching you electrostatics. Now, first of all, we must know the word electrostatic. The electrostatic means charge at rest. So, so, first of all, we must define charge. Now, as you know, electric charge is the basic properties of matter. Some experiment has shown that there are many substances which when dumped by different substance acquires the property of attraction. The agency that imparts this attracting power is called electricity. And the property responsible for this is termed as charge. Now that's quite a book definition. Now let me explain you what is charge and what are the things that we study in electrostatics. Now, for example, if you take a glass rod, and you are, all of you have seen test tubes, a glass rod in chemistry, I suppose. Now, if you take a glass rod and hang it by means of an insulator or thread, say, and if you take a silk cloth, you see a silk cloth, this is silk, say, S I L K silk, silk cloth, this is glass cloth. What you do is take the silk cloth and rub over the glass rod. If you rub over the glass rod, the glass rod acquires positive charge. Okay? Now, if you do the same thing with a second glass rod, let me take another glass rod here. If you take another glass rod, okay, and also rub it by means of silk, it will again, uh, it will again have positive charges to it. Now, if two glass rods are brought close to each other, you find that there is a repulsion between them. Showing one thing for clear that two light charges rebel okay both are issued positive charges and so they rebel away from each other now let us take another substance we usually in books you will find out there is a substance called ebonoid e b o n i t e ebonoid now ebonoid is a kind of a rubber. Now, if you take even oil and rub it by means of a flannel, you know flannel? Flannel that we use as a scarf during the winters, warm thing. You take a piece of flannel and rub it, rub it on even oil. Immediately you will find that the even oil gets negative charge. And if you take ebonoid in front of a glass rod, if you take ebonoid in a glass rod, there is attraction between them. There is attraction between the glass rod and the ebonoid, showing that the ebonoid has a different charge as that of glass rod. The glass rod patient is positive charge and the ebonoid is having a negative charge. Now, to ask one question that why glass and ebonoid are having different charges? Why are glasses having negative charge? Why are ebonoid is having positive charge? Now that's a very really good question. To understand it, we must go to the electron theory and the atomic structure. Now, let us now go to the electron theory and atomic structure. If you if you consider an atom the atom has 
a nucleus. Okay, this is a nucleus, and it has protons and its positive charges. It also has some neutrons, so let's write N, N for neutron, and these are protons. And it has equal number of electrons revolving around it. So this one electron here, so one electron here. Number of two, how many, how many positive charges? Two. So how many electrons? It must be two. Because atom as a whole is electrically neutral. The neutrons have no charges. These are these two are neutrons, so they don't have any charges. But uh, the protons have positive charges and the electrons have negative charges. The electron as a whole is electrically neutral. neutral. Now, these electrons, as we move farther away from the nucleus, as we move farther away from the nucleus, what happens? The electrons, these are valence electrons, and they can be easily dislodged. For example, when you take a glass or this is a glass or say, and a flannel, and you rub it, sorry, silk, you rub it with a silk, what happens? The electrons are torn from the glass to the silk. What happens in the case of humanoid? Uh, in the humanoid, it's the other way around. When you take an ebonoid and rub it with flannel, what happens? The electron moves from the flannel to the ebonoid. The electron moves from the flannel to the ebonoid, making it negative charges, make negative charge. So there is a series and it's called the trio electric series. When the trio electric series, all the uh, matters are arranged in such a way that uh, uh, some has some are uh, some has um, uh, negative electron or electron affinity they take the electron and uh, some has positive uh, mm, some assume positive charges in other words they give away electron from uh, their bodies okay so when you run two substances they either have negative charges or have positive charges from these things one thing is clear one thing is clear that uh, uh, light charges ripple, non light charges attract. Now, <coughs> the next thing that we do is the, the glass rod, that is the day, the glass rod is here. Now, you rub it with silk rod, it exudes positive charges. Okay? Now, the glass rod is used positive charges means this is a silk rod. Okay, this is a silk rod. The glass rod is used positive charges means some, how many, let's say, for example, one, two, three, four positive charges are there. It means that four electrons, four electrons are transferred from the glass rod to the silk. In other words, the Valence electrons of the glass rod are dislodged from the glass rod to the silk. And that's why this glass rod is having positive charges. Now you see, any body, any body has a charge we write in fix as Q equals to M into E. In other words, what is E? E is the charge of the electron. What is the charge of the electron? 1.6 into 10 to the power of minus 19 coulombs. Okay? Now, how many, what will be the charge of the glass rod? The charge of the glass rod will be equal to 4 into 1.6 into 10 to the power of minus 19 coulombs. Alright? What will be the charge of silk cloth? The charge of silk cloth will be again. It is 4 into 1.6 into 10 to the power of minus 90 coulombs, but we have a negative charge here. Okay? So charge moves in steps. Okay? The charge moves in steps. In other words, these are packet of charges that will be moving from the glass rod to the silk cloth. Okay? So charge moves in steps, and that is what we call quantization of charge. Okay? It flows one after the other. 
one to the other, one to the other. So it's called the quantization of charge. Now, let us understand one more thing after quantization of charge. You see, there are many things uh, called, some are called conductors. Okay, another is called insulators. Okay, and in between conductors and insulators is another class of material. Okay, and it's called semiconductors. Now, in conductors, what happens? The conductors there are lots of free electrons, and these free electrons can be easily dislodged. So, the conductors have lots of free electrons, and it can move under the application of electric field. For example, if you take a copper wire, if you listen to copper wire, okay, and you connect a battery in external field, what happens? You immediately find that the current is moving uh, around the wire. Okay? So that's what is conductor. So why is the current moving? There are, because conductors have this copper wire, so this is a copper wire. The copper wire has lots of free electrons. So we just apply a small electric field in the home of the battery instead and you find the current is moving in the circuit okay in insulators insulators what happens the free electrons are not easily dislodged you must apply a large, very high amount of electric field for the electrons to move in the insulators okay so insulators all of us know that the um, you know, uh, wood plastic these are all insulators okay and conductors, you know, conductors are gold, silver, copper, these are all conductors. And one more interesting thing is that the human body is also a very good conductor. So, conductors, insulators, and in between, there is another class of materials called semiconductors. So, example of semiconductors are germanium, silicon, etc. that we shall discuss in other classes. So, semiconductors for just for the beginners has conductivity in between conductors and insulators. Semiconductors have conductivity in between conductor and an insulator. Okay, now let me last thing that we should understand is how bodies can be charged. Now there are there are three ways of charging. First is by conduction. Conduction means physical touching by a body. For example, say this is a neutral body. This is the neutral body that's like N for neutral body. And you take a charged body. This is a positively charged body, say. This is a positively charged body. And what you do is you connect or you touch the neutral body by this positively charged body. So if you touch the neutral body by this positively charged body, what happens? Some of the electrons will come here, making this as neutral. And since electron has moved from this neutral body to this charged body, it itself becomes negatively charged because, sorry, it itself becomes positively charged because electrons have moved from this body to the cluster so this becomes positively charged and this becomes neutral so that is one process of, of charging a body by conduction now the second form uh, charging the second type of charging a body is number two by friction that I already told you that how we uh, rub a uh, glass shot with silk cloth or we rub mm, an ebonoid with a funnel, it can be charged. So that is that's I'm not more I'm not discussing anymore. So the third type, other than friction, number three is called the most important one is induction. Okay, charging by induction. Now, do you want to understand? Charging by induction, you take a neutral body, okay, a neutral body, place 
it, it should be a conductor. Now, you place it on top of an insulator so that no charge gets linked, no charge gets linked to the earth. So, it's placed on an insulator. Okay? And you take or you bring a charged body in the area. Say, for example, you bring a positive charged body in the area, neutral body. This is a neutral body. Initially, it is neutral. It is placed upon a it is placed upon a insulator. Now, what you do is, if you keep this charged body near this neutral body, the electrons or the free electrons will move, will be attracted by this positive charge body. So, if the free electrons move, it moves towards the positive charge body. Here, the electrons have migrated from this side to this side. So, here it will be excess of positive charges. So, this side will be full of electrons and this side will be full of less electrons or positive charges. Now, you see, induction does one important thing. It divides the charges. Electrons are brought in one half and the positive charge on the other half. Okay? And if you remove this, it will become a chemical. So, induction separate charges. If you remove this, it will become a Suppose if you bring a negative charge body here, okay, then all the positive charges body should be here and the negative charges body should be here. In other words, if you bring a negative charge, the negative charge will become the electron and move in the other side. So, this is uh, how we charge by induction. Now, induction, all of us know or have tried during our class, during our school days, a very interesting thing is that if you have small bits of paper, that is these are small bits of paper, and you take a scale, plastic scale, if you rub it in your hand, okay, few times, you rub it in your hand for a few times, and place it over those small bits of paper, you find that these papers are sucking or they are, they are uh, attracted, they are attracted by this cluster. They jump towards the cluster, uh, they jump towards the scale. Okay, now why this happens? This happens because let us assume, let us assume that this plastic scale is having a positive charge. Okay, in other words, when you rub it in your hand, what happens is the uh, plastic scale, some electrons has moved from plastic scale to your hand. So the plastic scale are deficient of electrons. So it is having positive charges. Now it is placed on top of a paper, piece of a paper. So, immediately induction will take place. Induction, how? Near end, opposite charges, far end, positive charges. Okay? Now, there will be a force of attraction between positive and negative. Okay? Listen to this. There will also be a force of attraction between the positive and the positive force of repulsion. So, let us write it as, write it as Mg. This is force of repulsion. Okay? Okay, let us say this FR, force of repulsion. And this is as force of force of attraction. So this and this, 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 this and this force of attraction, this and this force of repulsion. Okay? Now you see the negative charges are close to the plastic scale. So its influence will be more. And positive charges are away from the plastic scale. So its influence is less. So force of this net force of attraction between the paper and the scale. Immediately the paper will jump towards the scale. So that's how induction takes place. So a little bit of introduction, introduction today for the first class. So we'll be dealing with electrostatics equations, electric fields, and electric potentials and other things. So in the next class, I will be discussing Coulomb's law and its application. Thanks for now. Stay home, stay safe.